Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and you're gonna be a spicier person after watching this video. Threaten people I love and steal money from me? Have fun getting deported. Full disclosure, I have no idea if this goes in the sub at all. I'm mostly a lurker, I'm on mobile and English is not my first language, but let me know if I mess up. Let me know if this isn't the place to post or you think it'll fit in another sub. TLDR at the bottom. I've wanted to post this story for a hot minute, but wanted to supply some sort of proof. All of that is gone because this happened 3 or 4 years ago, but I'll try to keep things as clear as I can. So back in mid-2015, I lived on a military post in Germany and just got fired from a movie theatre because they believed I was stealing, which is another fiasco in itself. The long and short of it was my trainer, we will call Eric, taught me it was okay to pay for popcorn and only be charged 25 cents for it. Shortly after, Eric moved on to TGI Chili Bees and 12 of 20 people on our team got in trouble because of him. Thankfully, I already had a job lined up at Chili Bees and was set to quit anyway. I started at my new job and I loved it. My team was a tight-knit family and I still talk to old co-workers from there to this day. I worked the to-go area and occasionally helped out with food prep because we did crazy numbers every week. Now, I don't ever recall seeing Eric for the first couple of months, so I thought he was at another location close by, whatever. I had no animosity towards him. I was the one who convinced myself that it was okay to steal from my job. As mentioned a bit earlier, I didn't see Eric the first few months of me working there, but he came in early for his night shift, and I was happy to see such a familiar face. We caught up and he told me he was dating one of the servers we'll call Rita. Eric and Rita were an absolute disaster together. I can't remember a single time where there wasn't some sort of drama between them. She and I did eventually become work buddies when we switched to the day shift. When they broke up, one time of many, she told me kind of ominously that Eric always did shady crap and that I should always keep an eye on my register. I just thought it was her talking smack about her ex and I didn't really think about it. Early 2016, I got word that I would be moving back to the US and it broke my heart. I didn't want to leave. I had finally started to make friends after living there for three years. To this day, I've never been sadder about a move. I talked to my friend and made arrangements to stay with her, as long as I got my life together and paid a pretty hefty deposit. I started saving and telling everyone about my plan, Eric included. One day, $20 went missing in my till. I was freaking out. By law, we weren't required to pay out of pocket for the imbalance in the drawer, but it was likely that we would get fired. If there was an extra 20 in the deposit, my managers told me that they will reimburse me by my next shift. I lost the majority of my tips that day, but I chalked it up to human error. Soon, this would start happening 2-3 to three times a week, always short, always $20. I have no clue why, but my job didn't have security cameras for the to-go station, so it wasn't like they could go back and see what was happening. I started asking others if they were having an issue, and they said yes, always short 20. I remember feeling like I couldn't trust my co-workers, which made me sick to my stomach. At this rate, I wouldn't be able to stay in Germany, and why would I want to if I worked with thieves? Another male co-worker of mine who everyone hated, I still have no idea why, shout out to my boy Lolo, you're the best, announced that he got paid out by VA for his disabilities. This guy had a long string of bad luck, and I was super excited for him that his life was going to turn around. A few shifts after him bragging about his new income, his till came up short $80. Lolo, who had yet to been paid out, was forced to cough up that money when his family was already struggling. I gave him my remaining tips for the day to soften the blow. As a little aside, I bet some of you are asking, why didn't you tell management? We did. They were not willing to put a surveillance camera at the to-go station and implied that it was our fault for leaving the till money alone. As long as the drawer was balanced for the bank deposit, they didn't give a toss, so all the to-go people started doing mid-shift audits to make sure it wasn't us. Well, Lolo took it upon himself to figure out who was taking the drawer money. No one left the till by itself because we were too afraid that we would get blamed. My male co-worker pulled me aside and told me that he thinks it's Eric or another server named Alex. I couldn't believe that, for whatever naive excuse I had in my head. But while swapping from day to night shift, I left Eric alone with my till. Sure enough, I was short $20. I was shook. I pulled a manager to the side and basically said, I can't prove anything, but it's just a hunch and Eric is the one taking money from everyone. I was told they would look into it, but nothing happened. Sometime in February I was at home, watching TV with my mom, and I got a Facebook message. Eric was essentially bitching about how I didn't do anything during day shift. Now, I like to think of myself as not confrontational, 
But after working that particularly busy shift and having to literally run home for family drama, he just rubbed me the wrong way, and I replied in a not so sweet way that he didn't appreciate. We went back and forth about this for 20 minutes over Messenger. I, very stupidly, let it slip that I believed he was stealing from the tills and he stopped replying. This is where it gets kind of crazy. I went on his page and the first thing that pops up is a gif. I can't find it anymore and even if I could, I'm not sure I could post it. It was a cartoon woman getting her throat slit. Eric captions this lovely post with, do you ever just wanna? And I, being freaked out, put it in my Facebook save folder and went to message Rita about what just happened. She admitted to me that this was normal for him and to just stay out of his way because he could get scary. I blocked Eric and didn't speak to him unless I had to. I didn't know what to do. Management wouldn't help me, so I just avoided him at all costs. A month later, the girl that offered for me to stay with her approached me on my second to last day in the country and told me, with a pale face, that her till was short $20 and she got hardly any tips that day because it was slow. And though I didn't let it show, I was internally shaking with rage. That girl was and still is one of the sweetest people I know and she was already a mess because her husband deployed for the first time just days before. Everything and anything caused her to break down into tears because she didn't know how to handle being by herself. She was the only to-go person left that refused to believe that anyone was stealing and this was the first time it was happening to her. You can do just about anything to me, but you don't mess with my friends. Now, since my job is technically a part of a franchise, I did need to outprocess with HR. I was on my way out the door after speaking with them when I turned and said, actually, there is something that I need to get off my chest and I spilled my guts. Sorry to say the rest of this is hardly interesting. I was interviewed by a higher up and told not to worry, that they would handle it from here. I didn't hear anything until late 2017, while catching up with a sweet girl I blew a gasket for. She said that people were pulled aside and asked about Eric's character. His on and off girlfriend admitted that he was physically abusive, and was known to send threats to others that were passive, like what I saw on his profile. My last minute courage gave her strength to leave him for good, and after being caught with marijuana and after he got his warning, he was deported back to the United States. As far as I know, he lives in Texas, and no one has had their drawers short $20 since. It sounds like management really sucked at that place. Someone steals money from your till and you're just supposed to pay up or you'll get fired? That's pretty shady business tactics if you ask me. And it doesn't sound like a good idea to have a thief behind the counter. He sent me unwanted nudes? So I sent them to his dad. I recently posted this in Pro Revenge, not knowing about Petty and was told to repost it here, so I am. Disclaimer, my post on Pro Revenge had a lot of backlash about CP and I apologise I didn't know what I did was wrong at the time and I'm sorry if it offends or bothers you. So when I was 14 I had just gotten Snapchat for the first time. I was still getting used to it and trying to figure it out, but luckily my friend showed me how to add people and send messages and yada yada. One day when I was lying in bed, I had received a friend request from this guy we'll call DB for douchebag. Anyway, I added him back to see who he was and it turns out he was a guy from my old school. I never talked to him, I just saw him in the hallways and stuff. We started talking and things seemed fine, exchanging hellos and how are yous, stuff like that, but then he ruined it. He sent me a picture of his face, asking if I trade. Now, because of my ex, I knew what it meant and I told him no and screenshot the picture. Douchebag then sends another picture of him holding his penis with his face in the picture, disgustingly saying that he was jerking off while talking to me. I screenshot it, even though I was mortified and disgusted with this. I told him no and to F off. Douchebag then started cussing and called me a whore, but I blocked him before he could say anything else. I went to my Facebook because I knew he added me there a while ago and I manhunted for his parents. Soon I find his dad and we'll call him CG, considerate guy. I asked considerate guy if he was douchebag's dad and he responded with yes. I then sent him both pictures of his son and more screenshots of the insults. Considerate guy was livid and he called me apologising and said he would take care of it. It turns out the considerate guy posted all of the screenshots I sent him of his son's nudes, blurred out only showing his face, and him asking me to trade and the insults. Not only that, he posted a video of himself smashing the battery of Douchebag's phone, saying he didn't raise his son to disrespect women like that. Long story short, don't send me nudes I don't want or your battery is gonna get smashed. Okay, this one is kind of messed up if it's true. I can understand messaging the parents to say, hey, your son is sending me inappropriate pictures where he's nude and stuff, and I've told him that I don't want to see that. 
I think you would only send the pictures, maybe like even the blurred or censored pictures if the parents didn't believe you. But then it gets worse. Then the dad posts the pictures of his blurred son's nudes on his Facebook. That's another level and it's pretty disgusting to be honest. What do you think? Am I overreacting here? Okay, so that's all for r slash regular revenge. I really hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. My Twitter, Discord and Patreon links are in the description, and any support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, 